who's got their thinking caps on today? Well, if not, you better put it on because you're gonna need it. We're about to play Bible Name or Element. The rules are simple. I'll read a name and you have to decide if you think it's from the Bible or from the periodic table. If you think it's from the Bible, then cheer and clap as loud as you can. But if you think it's from the periodic table, then I want you to throw your head back and laugh like a mad scientist. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. Easy enough, right? Let's begin. Here's our first word. Manganese. Remember, if you think this is a Bible name, clap and cheer. But if you think it is from the periodic table, then laugh like a mad scientist. Time's up. Who's laughing? Well, you can keep laughing because you're right. Manganese is from the periodic table. All right, let's try another. Ephraim. Time's up. Are you laughing? If so, you should be clapping. Ephraim is the name of Joseph's second son in the Bible. Here's the next one. Habakkuk. Time's up. Are you clapping? If so, you're correct. Habakkuk was a prophet in the Old Testament. Well done. See if you can figure this one out. Sargin. Time's up. Who's laughing? Because you should be clapping. Sargon is an Assyrian king from the Old Testament. Here's the next one. Oxygen. Time's up. Is everyone laughing now? Because oxygen is from the periodic table. Here's the last one. Epaphras. Time's up. Is everyone clapping? If so, you're right. Because Epaphras is a friend of Paul from the New Testament in the Bible. Great job, everyone. Go ahead and give yourself a high five. Good morning. What's up, EBC kids? Hey, guys. Welcome to another week of Crosstown. It's Miss Erin, and I'm so glad that you've decided to join us today. This week, we are talking about the tabernacle. The tabernacle also was called the tent of meeting, and it was kind of like a portable place of worship where God's presence would come down and meet with his people. A little bit later, we're going to take a closer look at the tabernacle and what it shows about our relationship with God. In this series, we're talking all about how God gives to me. And today, I want you to remember that every day, I am who Jesus says I am. Can you say that with me? Every day. I am who Jesus says I am.
Let's get things started off with a little song. So I want you to get up on your feet and let's sing it out as loud as we can together. and the tent of meeting. This is Moses, Hello. who was an Israelite who grew up in the palace of the Egyptian Pharaoh. When Moses was much older, God called him to take his people out of Egypt with the help of his brother Aaron. Let me hear God. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the promised land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. While they were in the wilderness, God and Moses would talk in a place called the Tent of Meeting. Morning, Moses. Uh, morning. Moses would take the tent and pitch it outside the Israelite camp. Everyone who wanted to ask God for something would go to the Tent of Meeting outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the Tent of Meeting, all the people would watch Moses until he disappeared inside. As he went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and hover at its entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Wow! Inside the Tent of Meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face, just as one speaks to a friend. And because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can talk to God as if we were talking to a friend too. 
Well, what a great Bible story. The tabernacle, or the tent of meeting, is where God placed his own presence. Listen to this demonstration as we hear more about the tabernacle. Wouldn't it be weird if you were reading your Bible and you came across a verse that said, don't you know that you are a hockey stick? Or how about, don't you know that you are a potato? That would be super strange, right? I'm obviously not a potato, I'm a person. But in 1 Corinthians 3.16, we read something in the Bible kind of like that. Paul says, don't you know that you yourselves are the temple of God? That's actually in the Bible. What's going on here? Does Paul think that we're a building or something? Well, Paul's not confused and what he's telling us is actually really amazing. God wants to be close to the people he made and loves, and that includes you. Okay, so I don't have a giant tent made with gold, but we do have this that we found on Amazon. Now, the real tabernacle, that amazing tent, is where God would put his presence, his glory, a part of himself. This is what God says in Exodus 25, verses eight and nine. He says, have them make a tent for me. Why God? I will live among them. Think about that. The God that made the universe would live, put his presence in that tent. That is a big deal. God wanted to live with his people. Jesus was like a walking, talking, real life human tabernacle. The spirit and presence of God was in him. How? Well, because he was God himself. Before, if you wanted God, you had to go all the way to the tabernacle. But now, when Jesus shows up, it's God showing up. God now got to be way closer to the people that he loved through Jesus. But even still, he wanted to be closer to you. Jesus, the living, breathing tabernacle of God, would allow himself to be broken down, torn apart on the cross, and his life and spirit leave him. Why? so that the same spirit that was in Jesus could be in you. When you choose to follow Jesus, he sends his spirit to live on the inside of you. You become filled with the presence of God. The same spirit that was with Adam and Eve in the garden, the same spirit that was in the tabernacle with Moses, the same spirit that was in Jesus makes his home in you. That's how close God wants to be with you. That's how much God loves you. So looking again at Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 3.16, don't you know that you yourselves are the temple of God? Well, now you know. So then who are we? Well, I am who Jesus says I am. And for those of you that follow Jesus, Jesus says, you are the temple of God. That's who you are. Did you guys hear how he said in the demonstration that we are God's temple? This is so much better than having a place that we have to go to any time that we want to be with God. Because of what Jesus did when he died on the cross, we get to be a living, breathing tabernacle and have God with us all the time, wherever we go. Isn't that awesome? We are God's tabernacle. Well, that's it for this week, guys. But I want you to remember that every day we are who Jesus says we are. As you go through this week, remember that. So thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great time. See you next week. Bye.